And now something completely different. Watch us on YouTube. Listen on your favourite podcast platform. Or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow and join in now. Strap yourself in. Because we're set up, switched on and ready to go. on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. Right, Chris. All right, good evening. Hello. Well, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day, depending what part of the world you are in. Welcome along to Leicester Till I Die TV. Uh, if you're watching us on either YouTube and Twitch, welcome along. Uh, thanks for joining us. And if you are listening on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, Google, or your favorite podcast platform, thank you for lending me your ears. And don't forget, you can always listen back to the podcast on your smart speaker. Just ask it to play the podcast, Leicester Till I Die. I don't know why you've got to say it in that order, but that's the way that it works. We have got a, a little matter of this this weekend. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, did we play them earlier in the season? I'm trying to forget. But uh, We've got the preview show tonight, stats and preview. Uh, as I said, hopefully you, uh, hopefully you can hear me all right because I've got a new microphone I'm using now. So please tell me if there's any sound problems at all. Um no problems with the shows, but we're merging the two shows together. So rather than have a full hour long stat show, we're going to have a quick half an hour looking at some of the stats. And then at half nine, we'll get Craig in, who I believe is watching Nottingham Forest tonight. And we've got um, Harry, um, Tottenham fan, who's at the moment enjoying the KFC, I believe. I think I know what KFC stands for. But we will come to that in a bit. So, um, sure. I mean, this is not a game I look forward to. I've got to be honest with you. It 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 so so isn't. Um, Terry's in. He liked the gear. Thank you so very much. It's actually this was. It was a Christmas present that was bought for me in the wrong size. Was sent back. It wasn't actually the present that I asked for. The one I asked for, you know, the blue one I've got. I asked for that version in white. But when it came through, it was the this baseball top. And I, I really do like it, to be honest with you. I prefer it to the original. But hello, Terry. How are you? Uh, David, good evening, sir. Welcome along. Welcome along. Anybody else not looking forward to this? But only because we always seem to lose out to Spurs. Doesn't matter what we do. You know, Son, last time, uh, he was rubbish. He was dropped. Came on. Got a couple against Leicester. Harry Kane. He scores for the fun of it, doesn't he? He scores for the fun of it against us. Um, and, um, do you know, sorry, just getting a message then. Um, congratulations to Harry on his 300 goals. I think we should be magnanimous and say that. Um, but I also think we've got to say, how many cups have you won, Harry? I mean, you have scored more goals than Jamie Vardy in the Premier League. I will give you that. Uh, you've won more golden boots than Jamie Vardy. I will give you that. But let's have a look and, shall we say, Community Shields, or English Super Cup, as I like to call it. Uh, Jamie Vardy, 
one, Harry Kane, nil. No. Uh, FA Cups, Jamie Vardy, one, Harry Kane, nil. No. Premier League titles, Jamie Vardy, one, Harry Kane, nil. No. <laughs> you you get what I'm saying here, you know. Uh, but like you say, uh, like you say, Terry. After last week, bring them on, indeed. Uh, <laughs> normal battery at home. I feel a lot happier, as Terry said. Then I do feel a lot ha happier after last week. Um, and Nate said it's a real test for our new signings. Looking forward to seeing what they can do. Look, I mean, it depends what Tottenham's going to turn up because you know. Well, let, let's have a look at let's have a look at this. This is our previous meetings, guys. Um, so the it's there the last six meetings. Uh, my eyes are going. I should have gone to Specsavers. Six meetings there. Uh, we've won. We've won one. Yes, uh, they've won five out of six. I shouldn't really do this to myself, should I? Look, we've scored nine goals. They've scored 19, although most of that was in the game earlier in the season. A lot of cards dished out, nine yellows to us and 11 to them. But we do know 6-2 at the start of the season. And you know what? I'm writing that off because that was a bad start. And let me just tell you something. Tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, do you know what really, really gets my goat? Sheep. No, no. What really gets my goat is when you have Leicester City, who were doing our best, our best to try and abide by FFP rules in the summer, so much so that we didn't buy any players. You remember the summer. And there we were trying to be, you know, <laughs> adhere to uh, FFP. And Manchester City were just <sighs> shoving it up their arse, weren't they? And saying, fuck you, you know. Oh, Women's Super League, West Ham nil, Chelsea 7. Whoops. Don't think there's going to be much of a comeback there. Um, it's a League Cup semi-final. Um, but, yeah, it does pee me off. So, Brad, who's in here, and he says hello to everybody. Uh, who won in the end, Brad? You or Anthony? Uh, he'll be joining me tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and we will be talking FFP. It's question time tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We start you off. We're going to start off with the FFP. I think we might be ending on that, to be honest with you. It really has got my goat. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the Super League as well, Brat. Yeah, you know, I mean, I said I put a tweet out earlier and it said, you know, you know, the, the Super League is being talked about again. But does that include Super Chelsea, ninth? Super Liverpool, 10th. Super Spurs, who haven't won anything in 15 years. And then what about Newcastle, who are sat in fourth? But what about Brentford? What about Fulham? You know, what about Brighton? All sat above, all sat above Chelsea and Liverpool, but they won't be deemed good enough. So I... I and the funny thing is that one of the key plays behind this is Juventus, which are allegedly one of the most corrupt and bent clubs in Europe. They've just been deducted points again this season. So would you want to play them? I wouldn't, because I'd be thinking, well, how many rules are they breaking to try and win this game? But we'll be talking about that tomorrow at 9 o'clock. So here are the last results. 6-2 to us. 6-2 to us. Uh, sorry, to Tottenham, I should say. Uh, we'll be talking about that game, unfortunately, later. Uh, one before that, Tottenham beat us 3-1. Uh, they beat us 3-2, uh, the last game at the KP. Before that, they beat us 4-2. Uh, before that, 2-0. And before that, 3-0. We have actually won some games. I've got to be honest with you. We have won some games against them, and we'll come on to that in a bit. Uh but here, as you can see, is the um, posi league positions that we are in. Uh, Tottenham are sat in fifth. But look at them. Lost one, lost, lost, one, one. I mean, you know, it all depends which, which Tottenham are going to turn up tomorrow. Hopefully, I, I, look, Brendan surprised me the other day. I'm not going to lie. Brendan surprised me. He actually played an attacking team 
He didn't play a team that had any defensive midfielders in and he made the right substitutions. But can he really do it two weeks on the trot? Because you know the old saying, if it ain't fit, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Has anybody ever told Brendan that? I mean, do you remember Nigel Pearson? You know, when, when we got promoted, you didn't know what team he was going to pick. The season before that, when we broke all the records in the championship, we knew we you could pick the team six weeks in advance. <sighs> Let's hope he sticks with that because that team that I saw against Villa, and yes, they're 11th, but top half, you know, using the BBC Liverpool rules, they are top half at 11th. Um, it was a performance. It was, to be honest with you. It was a great, my, for me, the best performance of the season so far. Um, so Tottenham are in fifth with 39 points. We are 14th with 20. Two. Now, if we look at the home form, which is obviously what well, because we're at home, um, we're 19th with our home form. God almighty, why, why do I keep doing this? We are 19th uh, with nine points. We've only won one in the last six at home. It, it's, it, God, it's scary. It's scary. Um and that was when we beat Leeds, that last win was. Um, yeah. <laughs> 19th based on the last 10 games. <laughs> you can't see that. And I just realised that. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually gonna, I won't be doing comments for a while, but let me just take, as you can see, the home form there. So we're 19th uh, out of 20 teams on home form. Uh, on away form, Tottenham. Oh, bloody hell, Tottenham a second. Oh, Jesus. I didn't look at this before I came on. I just came straight into the stats. Um, <laughs> so Leicester, Leicester, Leicester City, 19th on home form. Spurs, second on away form. It's, it's not going to end. Gonna, well, it's not going to end well, is it? <laughs> it isn't. Ah, oh, dear. Uh, and if you see the fixtures there, uh, our last fixtures, um, we, we beat Villa, we beat Walsall, we drew with Brighton, lost to Forest, <laughs> uh, we lost to Newcastle, and because we beat Gillingham. Whereas Tottenham, they beat um, Man City, although they did have a player sent off, which I guess will not be playing uh, tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Saturday. Um, they beat Preston. They beat Fulham. Uh, they lost in the first game to Man City. Uh, they lost to Arsenal. Uh, and they only beat Portsmouth 1 0. But obviously, that was in the Cups. So it was probably a reduced team. We do know they haven't got Loris. But then again, I was quite hoping he would play because he's not on best form at the moment. Uh, let's just have a look at our strengths, shall we? Um, let's have a look at our strengths, Chris. Yeah. Just get a few comments in first. Um, Even with Spurs sitting back, they are still full of goals. I know, that's the scary thing. Um, not full of cups, though, no. Uh, Super League, yeah, English, I know, I did see that, but it, it still annoys me. Uh, Brad says, well, all I'll say is Liverpool fans may want to see it finally, to see some positive happen. Ooh. Um, I think Brendan confuses himself at the time. Yeah, don't we all, don't we all? Um yeah, we're going to go into the Super League more tomorrow. Um, is the game on telly? I bet it's not. You're quite right, David, it's not. But the Blackburn Rovers FA Cup game on the Tuesday is on telly. It's on the BBC iPlayer. Um, oh, apparently Spurs stream it off their own channel. Are they sure? I don't think they will do because of uh, Terry, because of FA rules. You know, Premier League rules. It won't be shown live if it's not on a. It's like Man United could not show Man United games on MUTV because of the agreement that they, you know, that that um, Sky has with the with the Prem, you know, with the Premier League. So no, it won't. It won't be live on on, on Spurs channel. If you have a Fire Stick, it will be available on some channels. If you do the search and find it is all I'll say, but uh, but uh, don't find it on, on anything else, unfortunately. Uh, so Leicester's strengths, we haven't got many, have we? 
Uh, shooting from direct free kicks, very strong. I mean, I still say that's down to Madison, but of course he is back. And extra long shot opportunities. Uh, Tottenham strengths are coming back from uh, losing positions. <laughs> you know, yeah, we already know that. Creating chances through individual skill. Creating, they're very strong on both of those. They're strong at creating scoring chances, attacking down the wings, creating long shot opportunities, finishing scoring chances, counter attacks, attacking set pieces, and aerial duels. Weaknesses, again, we, we come out top on this avoiding offside, defending against through ball attacks, defending against skillful players, protecting the lead. <laughs> Tell us something we don't know. Uh, stopping opponents from creating chances, aerial duels, defending counter attacks, defending set pieces, and defending against long shots. Yes, yeah, should we turn up? Should we turn up on Saturday? Uh, Tottenham's weaknesses: avoiding fouling in dangerous areas, uh, stopping uh, opponents from creating chances. And they're very weak at avoiding individual errors and defending against skillful players, of which we've got a few now. Uh, Leicester's style is short passes. Let me just bring this up for you here so you can see it. Um, Leicester's style there, short passes, uh, attempt through balls often, take long shots, playing in our own half, play the offside trap, and we are non-aggressive. I must admit, I think Chris, Chris, um, Victor Christiansen, I think he actually brings something aggressive to the team. I'm, I'm really, I think he's a great sign. I think they all are, but I think he is a great signing. Tottenham style, short passes, attack through the middle, attacking down the right. They take a lot of long shots. Opponents play aggressively against them. And they like playing in their own half and they are aggressive. And the thing is, though, I mean, when we look at that game that we played, I mean, yes, we lost 6-2. But a lot of Spurs fans were saying in that first half we were actually worrying them, uh, and then we just collapsed. So who knows? Who knows what will happen? Uh, match forecast here. Ooh, do you think we dare look at it? Close your eyes, everybody. You don't want to, if you don't want to be upset. Turn away from the screen now. Uh, Leicester will score from a direct free kick is very likely. Uh, Tottenham will score as a result of individual skill is very likely. Uh, Tottenham will make a comeback if they go. Uh, Tottenham will make a comeback if they go ahead. Oh, sorry, if they go behind. Sorry, is very likely. Uh, Tottenham will score a long shot very likely, and then likely it's all Tottenham. I'm afraid, guys. Likely Tottenham will create many scoring chances. Tottenham will dominate in the air. Tottenham will score from a fast break situation. Tottenham will score from a set piece um, situation. So. Sure, sure. Should, we, should we just end it all now? Shall we? It's not good, is it? Um, I did say Neil's in. Good evening, Neil. How are you? Tottenham's weaknesses are finals. <laughs> it's just cups. I mean, as I said earlier, congratulations to Kane on, on his 300 goals, but the cupboard's bare. The cupboard is bare. Um, Yeah, fire stick. That's right, Terry. If you've got a fire stick, you can find most matches. Um, but if it's not on, if it's not on Sky BT Prime, that you won't, you won't be able to see it on on any club site. Um... <laughs> of course, you're a good boy, Terry. Not okay. Let me just. Um... Let me just have a play around a second. Right, here we go. So, just to um, do one or two last stats here. Um, like I say, we've just we've just seen the uh, the last games, but you know, Leicester's form. I mean, that four two was was amazing, wasn't it? I mean, as I say, for me, it's the highest team that we beat this season. Um, yes, we have got Tottenham coming up. Yes, we have got Manchester City, but we've seen. Both those teams are beatable. They really, really are. I mean, none of us would have guessed that Tottenham would have scored and uh, got three points against Man City the other day. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we got a good draw with Brighton. And that was that was good. I mean, you know, when you look at what they did to us in, in, in the first game, that is actually a, a good result. Uh, the Forest one, I'd rather not talk about. 
<laughs> as the same with the Fulham, to be honest with you. And I mean, Newcastle, got to be honest with you, they just played us off the park. And of course, the game before that, of course, in the league was Liverpool. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I, I mean, I don't blame anybody for own goals because nobody goes out, you know, every own goal is unlucky because they're not meant. I mean, Harry Souter, his first game in the Premier League, his first game for his new club, and he scores an own goal. Tell you what, though, that would have been the easiest thing for Rodgers to have dealt with at half time because Vout Faze would have just gone over to him, taken him to a side, and talked him through it. And it's the best game that Vout Faze has had since, you know, the. Uh, the, the two own goals against Liverpool as well. So he could be coming back to form because he struggled since then. Let's not lie. Um... Uh, it's like kids going on an adult website. <laughs> um, they've got no decent keeper. Well, no, no. Uh, Fraser Foster, I think, is going to be in goal. Um what a difference one match makes. Hey, it feels so... It Neil, it does. Totally feels so much better. And yes, we could get stuffed again tomorrow and we'll all be peed off and calling for Brendan's head. But when you're having the sort of season that Leicester City are having, you take anything you can get, you know. <laughs> it's one win, but you, you take it, yeah. Um, Chris is in. Good evening, Chris. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. How are you? Uh, Chris, do you think we missed the option of a big lad that can score headers up front? I mean, that's always an option. But, uh, oh, Kelechi didn't do so bad last week, did he? Got his head on the end of something. Um, and we all we all love a bit of Kelechi, don't we? Oh, I love that. Um <laughs> But yes, it's always an option. I mean, obviously, um, for free kicks, corners, Harry will be going up six foot eight. Uh, and, and he can jump, unlike our other six foot defender, Dane, who can't jump. Um, <laughs> he laughs. Um, yeah, but yeah, he did. He got on the end of it. He does like the odd header. I mean, Vardy gets the odd header. He's not, he's not known for his headers, though, but I think. I really hope that he doesn't go for Vardy tomorrow because he's just not scoring goals. He's got to start Kelechi. He really, really has. Um, form goes out the window, to be honest. I had a Spurs fan on who said he'd prefer Ward uh, over Foster. My God! <laughs> I mean, come on, you know I like Danny Ward. And all this of we need to buy another goalkeeper. I'm sorry, we don't. Give Danny Ward a chance. A goalkeeper is only as good as his defence in front of him. But my God, if he's saying that, um, I, I mean, was it? It wasn't Force that was in goal when we beat them Southampton, was it? No, no, it wasn't. Uh, look, we've played them 33 times in the Premier League. It's not all doom and gloom. We have won seven. Sorry, we have won 12 of those. Spurs 16, and it was in five draws. I mean, I was looking at a prediction show on Doug's channel yesterday, and he had Man City fan on, and he was. Um, he was very dismissive of Leicester. But, you know, we have won 12. We've won seven of them at home. Spurs have won seven away. It's just our recent form hasn't been that good. But, hey, look, we we need we need a good performance. And, you know, we've got nothing. To, if we go for it, who knows? And all these records have got to be broken. So we've not won in the last six. About time we did then, isn't it? Um and then here, I oh, say we, we have we have looked at our previous meetings. Get your scores in, by the way, towards the end of the chat. We are going to be doing predictions. I've got the X Foxes and everybody's uh, table uh, and details in, so we will be looking at that. Um, Leicester could go at Spurs' defence. Uh, Romero suspended. I think we've got to go it, go for it. And look, all I'll say is, Brendan, you got it right last week. I couldn't criticise you at all. Now, we're stuck with Brennan until the end of the season, so let's just get behind him. And that doesn't mean that I will not criticise him if it, if I feel there's something he's done that I don't think he should have done or he's made some bad decisions. I will have a go at him, but 
we've got him till the end of the season. So let's 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 stick, you know, let's get behind him as much as we can. Uh, but last week he went for it. He, you know, put an attacking formation out, no defensive midfielder in there, starts Kelechi, Kelechi scores. You start it for me, and we're going to do a starting 11 last week, but let's just bring up the Villa starting 11, because to me, there's no changes. There's no changes. You you just have that team. Um, what do you think about Christensen's passion, says Neil? Also, he's on the left-sided corners as well. Can I just say, by the way, guys, uh, Leicester fans, behind the 90, get over there, check them out. Uh, they're a really good Leicester City uh, channel. Uh, probably better than this one, if I'm honest with you. Neil is a great host. Anton there as well. Um, Anton there or Anton de Beck? No, Anton, Anton there as well. Great channel. Get out there and check them out and give them a sub. I love Christensen's passion. I, like I said um, a couple of times, I had a chat with um, the, the Danish um, uh, media outlet BT, which is equivalent of our News International, and they said how passionate it was. Uh, Copenhagen Sundays, which is the biggest fan club for them over there, said the same. I love the fact, I, I and he, didn't, he wasn't given the ball, but then we scored a goal off it, so <laughs> we're going to go mad. But I think it was 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 with Barnes, and he'd got the ball, and he'd run he'd run forward with it, played a, to, off to Barnes, and then he was literally shouting and pointing. But, you know, <laughs> as it happens, Barnes didn't. He crossed it in, and I think, you know, it was the one that Kelechi headed in. So, do you know... I love the. I haven't, I haven't seen that in a while. I haven't seen a player on Leicester side, and I, obviously I don't see because I'm watching on the telly. But and you know to see a player actually calling for it and pointing to where he wants it, then being ignored. But you know it, it's great. It's great. So I love his passion. I totally and utterly love his passion. Um, Rich is in Rich Sports. How the devil are you, sir? Oops, I've lost you. There you go. Uh, how are you doing, Rich? What did you do last night? 2 0 down to Leeds. Come on, do us a favor. I mean, if you're going to be beating Leeds, just manager. Well, I've, I've got you down as a Champions League place this year, Rich. Don't let me down. <laughs> Don't you think we need a defensive midfielder in against this lot? Good point, Terry. Well, our is in the team. Of course, uh, Craig will be cut, um, choosing the team later. So we'll see if he picks a defensive midfielder or not. Um, people have likened him to Harlan's sort of energy. Get that vibe a lot. Uh, yeah, I think you could be right, Chris. He... he uh, he was fantastic. Well, all three of them were. Well, Craig was in then, but Craig's gone again. He, he may come back. I do not know. Um, but, yeah, yeah, he's uh, – I, 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 I think it was almost a perfect window. If we could have got um, the Leeds guy over the line, uh, it, would have been, it would have been perfect. I mean, how must he be feeling now? Right, the club didn't want him because he went, you know, said, Oh, go to Leicester and have a medical. He's having his medical, he's talking to Brendan Rogers, and he's called back. I mean, how embarrassing is that, first of all? But secondly, secondly, they didn't go and sack the manager. He's not going to fill in with confidence. Jack Harrison, I think that's his name. Um, you know, he must be thinking, What the hell am I doing here? But uh, he's a Leeds player, so good luck to him. Uh, but, yes, a good point about a defensive midfielder. If Craig comes back in, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, tough game, but, yeah, it is. I mean, Son, he came on and scored two against us in the last game when he was had been dropped and was out of form. So, God, if he's on form, what gammon is he going to get? And we know, we know that um, he came, we'll, we'll always get a goal. Right, Craig is back in. He's in and he's out, and he's shaking it all about. Um, Arsenal for life. I hope you beat the Spuds. Thought you might do somehow. Uh, let's just quickly go through these, and we can get Craig in. Yeah, tough game against Spurs, but hopefully we stand a chance, says Fab. Uh, Nate, to be fair, they saved us from Leeds getting three points. Yeah, it's fair point. Fair point. We'll give them that. We'll give them that. Uh, 
Ain't even Bertrand, whoever he is, he's training. <laughs> and really? Well, he'll get injured in training, we know that. Look, apparently he's been off to watch Nottingham Forest tonight, so I hope he had a good time. Let's bring him in. It's the old wise owl, you know him well. Craig, good evening, sir. How the devil are you? I'm good, thanks, Chris. Hello, everyone. And how, how was the Nottingham Forest game? You did go to see Nottingham Forest tonight, didn't you? That's right, yeah. I was at the, uh, the comedy festival. You're quite right. Oh, I'm so glad you went with that. <laughs> I was waiting for you. No, I didn't see. I heard you right at the start of the show, and I thought, right, that's where he's going. Yeah, you know me so well now. You know me so well. Was it a good evening, sir? It was good. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was enjoyable. So, uh, for for those who don't know, Leicester Comedy Festival, um, biggest comedy festival outside of Edinburgh, been going thirty years. And runs from last uh, from Wednesday, just gone, started yesterday, all the way through to February 26th. So if you're in the area, try and get out and see something. Brilliant. Any any big names? Uh, there are a few big names. Um, I'm on the uh, although I'm not supposed to say it, but I am on the judging panel. So uh, we tend to <laughs> we tend to, to get Nobody's to see watching. the more up and coming acts. Ah. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. But yeah, I say nobody's watching, so nobody will hear you. So there was three of us in. So he was always going to come in third, I guess, wasn't he? Um, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, he was enjoying his KFC earlier, which I must admit I thought stood for um, Kane Fails con Contests. But uh, mm. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Harry, good evening. Hey, you all right. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good, you? Yeah, not so bad. I've got to say, Van, I did say this at the start, but you're in now. So, well done to Harry Kane. Is it 300 goals all-time record now? 267, 267 yeah? Yeah, 267, right. yeah. He broke right. Reese's records. I was actually right. there, so... <laughs> well, well, well done on that. Um, and it's good you got such a good goal scorer sort of playing for mm. you. But I'm just trying to compare. And I did early, but I'll do it again now. So, <laughs> Um, Community Shields, uh, Vardy one, Kane nil. Oh my god, and <laughs> <laughs> FA Cups, and Vardy one, Kane nil. Um, what's the other one? Oh, yes, Premier League titles, Vardy <laughs> one, Kane nil. <laughs> it's great having a good goal scorer at the club, isn't it, Harry? Yeah, it's unfortunate the rest of the players aren't as good. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome along. Um, give everybody, I'll put your link in the description below, mm. but just give everybody a shout out as to where, where they can find you. Yeah, so my channel is Has Spur TV, so H A Z and S P U R, so like Has Spur. And also on the socials, um, go follow me on Twitter at Has Spur 92. So they are pretty similar, so mm. it's not hard to get confused. <laughs> um, Oh, we're so, yeah. Leicester fans. We're easily confused. I mean, oh. <laughs> face, face then, he was like, what? You know. <laughs> if you like Spurs related content and me yeah. moaning after a loss, then it's on But the details <laughs> here are below there uh, uh, on yours uh, uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but welcome along. Thank you for joining us. Um, first question let's get, let's get the elephant in the room mm. out of the way, first of all. 6 2, last time we played. Mm. I mean, I don't know. Um, I've tried to block it out my memory. <laughs> but you look at that score, mm. and Craig, I'll come to you first. You look at that score, but some of the Spurs fans were actually quite worried in the first half. Yeah, I was I was actually at that game. Um oh, and that's why we it, lost. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was never a six two game. I, I think I think that's fair to say it wasn't a six two game. Uh first half I thought we played pretty well. Um, and then they brought Son on, um, and that was it. And, and to be fair, yeah, we we still had uh, a few of our old shortcomings um, from set pieces, corners, or whatever. We 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 conceded a couple of goals, um, but then you know Son scores a hat trick. Two of them are worldies. You know they're all, they're all great finishes. To be honest, um, mm. we didn't help ourselves. You know they came on pretty much like. Villa did uh, to for us last week. You know, you make the mistakes, but then you've got to punish them. And 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 mm. Son and Spurs punished us for the mistakes. But I thought overall, it was one of those games where it was when Brendan was really under the cosh, to be honest. And I remember coming on after that game, and obviously everybody was piling on. Um, 
but being at that game, it made me feel like the team was still playing for him. You know, it looked like the, the team were playing for him. We had a heavy defeat, but then we went on to, to have a really decent run on the back of it. So, uh, It'd be nice if uh, if Spurs we can beat Spurs this time to kickstart another good run following on from the Villa victory. Terry says, was Brendan at the comedy festival with his excuses? That would have been a good laugh. Um, TM is in. TM, it's been a while. How the devil are you, big Spurs mm -hmm. fan? But then that's two. Bloody hell. <laughs> Didn't know they had that many. Um, <laughs> Spurs, Spurs are back times. And Slurp is in from the Isle of Man. Uh, they're in a different time zone there uh, on the Isle of Man. Apparently, you win 2 1 with Kane with an injury time goal. I mean, that will probably happen because you only ever score after 90 minutes against us. But mm. were, were, were you at the game as well, Harry? Were you at that yeah, game? Yeah, I'm a season ticket holder, so I go to every uh, home match. Um, I've been to a few away games, but not as many. Right. And were uh, you worried in that first half by us? Yeah, I think the real change for the game for me was when Basuma came on and we turned into like a 3-5-2 and like Madison in the first half was literally destroying us mm -hmm. I mean you could have been two or three up in the first half from what I remember I actually love Madison I think he's quality mm -hmm. um and yeah he's not I, coming to you <laughs> <laughs> we probably can't afford him considering our chairman but <laughs> but um <laughs> I don't know if you've heard his recent quotes recently, but anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was quite scared in the first half. And I think until the um, you guys got tired and we went into like a five-man midfield, I thought you guys were going to beat us. And But I think Basuma was the real change. When he came into midfield, we looked a lot better, mm -hmm. along with Bentico and Hoiberg. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Basuma and Hoiberg, mm -hmm. no, Basuma's out of Saturday now. He's got an injury. Uh, Lloris is out for two months, so he's not going to play either. Uh, so yeah. Oh, what, what? I mean, I, I've got to say, I, I, I feel, I feel really, really, really bad for them. I don't know. It's so difficult not to look smug at this point. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. I mean, at that point, Son had been dropped, hadn't he? Before yeah. that day, because he wasn't on form. Comes on, gets a couple of. That's goals. the one game he's performed in the Premier League. I'd say mm. in that thirty minutes. Uh, or whatever it was, 20 minutes. Apart from that, Son's actually done nothing all season. This is coming from Son who watches him every week. Mm. I got a lot of, I get a lot of flack for saying this, but because there's a lot of people who defend Son because he has like mm. a big fan base. Yeah. In terms of just because of the way he is as a player, it's like he's very smiley, he's always very like happy and you know, and he was our top goal scorer last season in the league. Mm. So and unfortunately people tend to wanna push like show the past to justify the president and say, oh, he's got credit in the bank. But I'm not kind of fan like that. I kind of just, whoever's on form, I'll play. And if mm. they're not, I'll just drop them. Mm. But yeah, it's the yeah, only game he's really performed in this season, I'd say. <laughs> well, he'll do it again tomorrow. It's yeah. less good, yeah. isn't it? You know, whatever happens, you know, Kane will score as well. I think um, Kane is probably going to score. Yeah, I think he, he likes <laughs> yeah. to score against Leicester. Um, Brad does ask, though, um, does House feel that the Basuma has been a good buy for them? See, the thing with Basuma is, I'm kind of in two minds about it. So, part of me feels like he wasn't an actual Conte signing because Conte doesn't use him that much. Mm. And he hasn't really fit the system because Conte predominantly plays a 3 4 3, which most likely we will play a 3 4 3 to, on, on Saturday. Yeah, we most likely mm -hmm. will play that because he, he's very stubborn. He just doesn't want to change it. So, Basuma in a two man midfield uh, doesn't look as good. But when he's played in the three with Ben's corner, Hoiberg. He's actually looked quite good. But it, I think it's because of Brighton he played in the three. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think mm -hmm. it was a three. So I think that's maybe part of the issue. I, I don't know. Stubborn managers, Craig. He's very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? I've never known a stubborn manager, have you? No. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, no, you couldn't, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't say that about Brendan, surely. No, no, no. Or, or Nigel, if we go for that, that far oh, back. Yeah. Um, talking of signings, I mean, you, you saw you were you went to the game uh, last week, and and happy birthday for last week, by the way. Yes, thank you. I won't do our nineteen seventies radio Luxembourg jingling because I'm not really lined <laughs> up, but uh, it was a great that you went and you saw a win. Um, our three new signings, all of them starting. Um, yep. I was well. <laughs> there's any that I, mean, I felt sorry for Harry getting an own goal, um, mm. but. 
I thought all three had great, de- well, great, you know, starting. Uh, yeah, they they all they all gave us uh, great cause for optimism. I would say um, mm. Tete looked uh, looked a threat and uh, and the sort of closest thing <laughs> to, to Mares that we've been waiting for for like four years. Don't say that. Don't say yeah. that. No pressure on the guy. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, I think I, I think that debut has has put the pressure on him. Um, I think with Brazilians, though, you have to have an air of realism that you're not going to get that every game. You know, you are going to get the odd game where they throw in, uh, you know, just a shocking performance. Rafinha did it at Leeds. He could be brilliant, but then he could be anonymous. Yeah. Richarlison at Everton, he's not really played much for you guys, so you probably haven't seen seen that side of him yet. But I, I'm sure I'm sure it's there, and you know, I think we just need to temper that about Tete. Uh, but he's got all the tricks and he, and he loves showing them off. So that should be fun for whoever's playing uh, playing down the left-hand side for you on Saturday. Uh, hopefully Ben Davis, but uh, you never know. Um, and then uh, I thought Christensen was fantastic. You know, good old-fashioned marauding left-back. Um, mm. Reminded me a bit of, you know, when Robertson first went to, to Liverpool, and he was just bombing down that left hand side, and that was Christensen, you know. And he's got a bit of about him. He looks, he looks like butter wouldn't melt. But he he put, I think it was uh, Douglas Louise on his uh, on his backside and uh, and just stood over him, uh, sort of smiling at him as he was on the floor. So he's got a bit of a a, a toughness about him as I well. So when, they, when when I was on, they used to say like, you know, you're getting old when the policeman look young. <laughs> yeah, he looks like twelve. When the left backs look he young, yeah. Bonus, in fact, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, but you know, and then Suter played really well, you know. And and what I liked about Christensen and Suter as well, they both seem to be very vocal. They're not quiet fullbacks. No, you know, I think Thomas has been a bit a bit unfortunate this season. He's got a lot of stick. Um, he's still only young, but he doesn't have that presence that no. I think Christensen will bring. You know, they they were both talking to the rest of the back line, trying to get them higher up the pitch. So, yeah, it all bodes well. And, and hopefully, you know, they'll put on a similar performance uh, as they make their home debuts. I mean, I, 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 obviously I was watching the game um, on a... I'm sure it was an official link. <laughs> but I, saw, um, I saw... I think it was Free Nacho's goal. And mm-hmm. Christensen played a ball to, um, to Harvey Barnes. Yeah. Was pointing and shouting like, twice to get it. And as it happened, yeah. Barnes crossed it in and yeah. Inacho scored. And obviously, it was a great cross because of that. But yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen a player do that. But mm. and again, before the goal, I thought Tete, once he got the goal, he kind of just settled in and he was like calm. Yeah. Before that, from my point of view, and as I'm only watching it on the telly, he did mm. look a little bit uh, uh, anonymous. Mm. But still to get in the own goal, I mean, he. Yeah. Hopefully, I would have thought in that half-time, you know, team talk that Brendan would have just left him to say, right, go on, Val, go and have a word with him, you know. Yeah, he, um, I, yeah, he was unfortunate, you know. If, 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 you know, I think there was another one late on in the second half where Castagna did a similar thing, and it just looped up over, and, and it's like every cross that comes in, you know, you've got a chance. You, you've got a double chance. Um, on Saturday, if you put crosses into the box, either we'll score an own goal or Kane will score. So, um, <laughs> right. so if you can avoid that, that would be much appreciated. But uh, but no, Suter, you know, he put that behind him pretty quickly and he made a couple of really good blocks and interceptions in the second half too when we were under a bit of pressure. Has, I mean, what is... I, I thought this was going to be the season when Tottenham... I had you at the start of the season. I had you in the top four... I think I had you possibly even third. I thought, you know, here you got a good manager who comes in. He's not going to stand any nonsense. You know, he's going to stand up to, to Levy. Uh, but you you sort of win win two, lose one, draw one, win. You, it, what is happening with this season? It's just like every Tottenham season. <laughs> um, so we're like <laughs> consist, consistently inconsistent. Mm. Um in terms of Conte, I think, again, with every other manager that's come before him, he's not been given the players that he really wanted. Um, I know you might look at our summer business and think it was very good, but the fact that we went in January and signed Poro to sort of correct the mistake of not signing a right wing back in the summer, 
and getting Spence instead. I'm not saying Spence is a bad player. In the future, he might be really good, but it it kind of bode, didn't bode well. Um, I think Porro will probably start, actually, on Saturday. I think it's probably going to be his debut because mm-hmm. he can't play in the Champions League as far as I know. Um, but with Tottenham, it's like... See, you guys might be quite lucky because we we win against some teams like City and we go and lose to like Burnley or something or go and lose to like another team <laughs> like that straight you after. Like to Burnley, how dare no, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> None taken. No. <laughs> no, and in the sense that we're just very inconsistent. Like, we'll, like last season, I remember we lost, who was it? We beat City, but we lost to like Southampton at home and some mm. other team at home, I can't remember the top of my head. Like two games before that, and I thought top four was done. And we went and win one at City. Then it was like, oh, it's back on again. And then we went and lost again. It was just, we don't make any sense. We literally don't make any sense. Mm. It's the problem the back line for me, most of all, because I know Dyer played all right against City. And Davies, that you just mentioned, he was like really, really good, actually. Um, I'm sure nine times at the time, they're not very good. So it's like the back line is the real issue, the spine of the team. If you've got Bentecourt, and Hoiberg are sort of our starting center, central midfielders who, if they're fit, they'll play. Mm. Um, but in center halves, it's just, and of a 3 5 2, especially, it's just shambles. The back three we have is just Romero is good, but the other two are always not that great. So I think that's the problem. You surprised? Do you think that's, uh, oh. the, sorry, Chris, do you think that's going to be exacerbated by Lloris not being there? So it's going to be less vocal? Uh, well, Lloris isn't the most vocal goalkeeper anyway. Mm. Um, also, I don't think you guys have been watching Tottenham much this season, but he's done a lot of clangers. He's not been good. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, you're glad he's out, aren't you? <laughs> uh, to, to, like, it's weird you say that because Spurs Twitter was either like, and I'm, it's coming from someone who's Levy out, criticising the board for not signing a goalkeeper. Now, I'm the most Levy out person, but I did not see that as like a, a stick to beat him on because to yeah. sign a a top class goalkeeper in January, we're talking you're gonna to have to spend like 100 million or something or something crazy. Or they might not, and I don't think there's anyone anyone on the market anyway. And Forster for me is all right as a backup, he's okay. And we've been crying out for like the past month to play him. So now Lloris is injured. I don't know why everyone's like suddenly losing and saying, Oh, he's injured. We didn't buy a goalkeeper. Well, you've been saying for the past month to play Forster anyway. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand it. Forest sign that was somebody from PSG that used to play for Real Madrid, and then was bloody awful for Costa Rica in the World Cup. I know mm. goalkeepers out there. I'm sure you, you laugh. We got linked with Ben Foster the other day as a yeah, backup saw, goalkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. no, Emergency no. goalkeeper as a backup for Fraser Forster. <laughs> but, for... uh, but I'm surprised at what you were saying though there about um, about Conte because. Like I said, I would have thought that he would not have let any players in mm. that were not his choices. And we hear this about Chelsea as well. Mm. Um, Chelsea, with Boye. Yeah. He's picking the players. Well, mm. that's fine. But, you know, if these managers go and somebody else comes in, this player that they've signed and given a long contract to, what if the new manager doesn't like it? And I thought mm. Conte would be, like I say, the one that was going to stand up to him. I mean, we thought that about Mourinho as well. I did, mm. I remember. But I think Conte, also his contract was only 18 months or something, two years. So mm. I think he's just going to see it out. And he might. a lot of people are quite 50-50 whether he's going to stay or not. Um, I, I'm i leaning towards the signs that he's going to go <laughs> because... Do you want I just, him to stay, though? I want him to stay, but mm. I just don't think he's going to get enough reassurances that he'll believe. I th- that's the thing... Um, it's just I think Pochettino is most likely going to be the dugout next season because that's what I don't see how it's going. Um, and I, unfortunately, Tottenham Serial well. winner. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, yeah. <laughs> don't I'll be very angry by the way if we get Poch back. Um, <laughs> um, but like, as in Spurs, go through the same cycles all the time, uh, and it's hard to really explain. Like we get to a point where we're top four, and everyone's like, let's push on. And then Levy doesn't spend, and then we just eventually, two years later or three years later, we fall back out of it, and then we go back in again and fall back mm. out of it. And it's just a vicious cycle. Um, but as for Conte, like, any manager like Conte, Mourinho, even Martin Joel, Harry Rednap, I rated all of them. I thought they were all very good, even that like, Pochettino, of course, as well. But these managers have a vision, and as Conte said to Sky Sports, come who was interviewed him, but the vision of the club does not match mine, especially what he said without saying it. Wow. Uh, wow. And 
and he's basically saying all the signs that he's basically not happy but not actually saying it and mm -hmm. he does a lot of indirects but this is what happens with Spurs managers they don't exactly explicitly say oh I'm not happy and obviously because the Spurs managers I have to say they get paid a lot of money like probably more than most managers in the league I think Conte's mm. on 15 to 20 million a year <laughs> so why would you walk yeah, away from that with six months left away. I don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's just, I know what you're saying, as in a lot of people did expect that, but mm. I kind of learned from Mourinho that I think the club will always sign players behind managers back. And Spence was a massive example of that in the summer. Mm. I mean, Greg, I was doing this, the stats and I'm, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy in doing them, really. I should I should check them and cherry pick. Well, if I cherry mm. pick ones that were good for us, we'd have had no stats tonight. But looking at the game, Leicester... Looking on home form, we're in 19th position. Oh, um, excellent. Spurs, on away form, are actually second. I mean, should we just give them the points now and not turn up? Or are we feeling positive after last week, though? Come on. I, th I think we, we have grounds to be positive, to be honest. And, and I think, as, uh, as Harry said there, that, you know, Spurs are inconsistent. Um, I, think, I think the phrase is, they're very Spursy. Um, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you don't you don't know. But we we know that you know yeah, Kane yeah. likes scoring against. I think he scored more against mm. us than any other team. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. That's, all all yeah, of his yeah. goals. So, um, but I think if we if we concentrate more on our own offense, then I think we we will give them a, a, a decent game. I think um, you've seen how Kane gets frustrated, you know, and he, and he ends up coming deeper and deeper. So, to be honest, I think our best chance of keeping Kane quiet is to be offensive and force him to come deeper and further away from the goal, to be honest. I think with Spurs, you say that, but with Spurs, is, I kind of disagree. I think you kind of need to give us the ball because we can't break anyone down. <laughs> <laughs> Most games, when we have the ball, we can't break anyone down. The only game where we succeeded doing that was when we when we play like a five-man midfield and we have mm -hmm. most of the possession, like Brighton away, when we won 1-0, we played the 3-5-2 and we had the majority mm -hmm. of possession. But if we were to play the 3-4-3, three, three, which is most likely, mm -hmm. uh, us being possession-based in that formation doesn't really seem to work. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but it just... I think it's to do maybe with the midfield. Cause... I, 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 I do get it. I mean, when you're when you're at your best, it is on the break when you've got Kane mm. and Son working in Plisesky. tandem. But that, that just doesn't seem to have happened this year for some reason. Son is um, just they're... completely... I don't know what's happened to him. Mm. It's just a mystery. Shall I, shall I cheer you up even more, Craig? <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> All right, I was cheering somebody up. I don't think it will be you, though. Uh, Spurs striker, as you said, Harry Kane has scored 18 goals in 15 Premier League games against mm. Leicester, with only Alan Shearer netting more against a single opponent opponent in the complete in the competition, which was 20 against Leeds. And I must admit, I thought when you were said like the only way we're going to stop him, I thought you were going to say like break his leg in that second <laughs> minute or something. You know. Well, to be honest, I, I mean, Kane is due an injury. Uh, you know, he's. he's you know, I'm not wishing one upon him. It sounds like been, it. <laughs> it's been very rare that he's gone through a season without his ankle. It's true, it's true, it's some true. Point. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, so maybe he's due. won their last four Premier League games against Leicester, the best winning run against the Foxes in their league history. Um, Leicester have just kept, sorry, Leicester have kept just one clean sheet in their 16 Premier League home games against Tottenham, conceding at least once in all of the past 13 such meetings since the 3 0 win in September 1997. Just points are yours, Harry. <laughs> just well, I can guarantee you this there's going to be goals on Saturday. <laughs> Yes, I think there is. Dave Madison has been directly involved in nine goals in his last nine Premier League starts. Six goals and three assists. Uh, picking up where he left off with a goal against Aston Villa on his, well, on his return. But Craig, and this is scary, Harry Kane is the top scorer, obviously, for, for Tottenham. And I think he's on 17 goals for the season. Mm -hmm. Our top strike or our top scorer is Madison on eight. Yeah. That's the difference, isn't it? 
It is, but the, you, you can look at that another way. You can say that we spread the goals around so we're not reliant on one player. And if that one player has an off day, where are the goals coming from? I can see that. I can see that point of view. Hmm. Even think, as a Spurs fan, we were like, okay, and waiting for the question, is it not, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, thing is, though, I mean, how confident are you going into this game, Harry? I mean, you know, if I was on your, you know, in mm. your shoes, to be fair, I'd go, all right, so you've won the last, you know, the mm. last game, but we beat you 6 2 and all, all this. You'd be, you'd be thinking, are you feeling confident going into this? Yeah, I am. Uh, now that Son, Son kind of scored a bit at Preston, maybe he will score a goal, I don't know. But the midfield doesn't worry me as much. I know Bissouma's out, but I Hoiberg and Bensko are very solid together. They're a brilliant pairing. Mm-hmm. And I think with Kuliseski being back, I think that makes a huge difference for us. Like, it's actually massive. Because he's basically, apart from Kane, he's basically our creativity. And I actually think Leicester will more likely get um, some success if they kind of cut off his supply from Kuliseski because Kuliseski is one of those players. And you spoke about Mares earlier. He's yeah. very similar to Mares. He yeah. cuts in off the right and his delivery is just 99% of the time he'll find who he wants. Mm. Um, his, he likes to come in and shoot off the right, cutting and cro- crossing, yeah, cutting off the right and have a shot cross goal. Um mm. And yeah, Kane, obviously, last game he did score, and that was through our high pressing. Mm. But playing against someone like City suits us more because City just have most of the ball mm. and we just hit them on the counter. It it kind of depends. Leicester-Tottenham is always a very open game. I don't think yeah. I've ever watched this Leicester Spurs game be like nil-nil or something. <laughs> I'd have to think back. Yeah. One of my first memories was watching a Spurs-Leicester game, actually, when I was in yeah. the, like, the 90s, and it was like 4-3 or something, or something crazy <laughs> like that. I can't remember what it was. How's Kulisevsky at um, tracking back? Because I can guarantee you, Christensen will be running past him um, at every opportunity and, and doubling up with Harvey Barnes down that left-hand side. So what's been happening late, lately is Kulisevsky's actually come inside. And then one of the midfielders tends to come across. Mm-hmm. And then, yes, yeah, so that's so I, he does do some tracking, though. His tracking is pretty yeah. good. But I, I have to say, I haven't seen Christensen play, so I can't really judge what he's like. What I could say, though, is um, I really judge you guys times Harry Suto because he'd probably yeah. get into our team. <laughs> <laughs> he's, really I, better than what, he's better than what we've got. <laughs> Yeah. You can sort of back me up here because I was about to say my, my best memories of uh, Tottenham of the 15 16 season. <laughs> I think you beat us at the lane, didn't you? <laughs> Sorry? Did you beat us at the lane? I think. Me? That season? I think we did. We did. Um, I'll tell you why I remember twice, this. I think, didn't we? Mm. I remember this so vividly because I went, I went absolute ballistic because I had this massive thing that season about defending set pieces. Yes. And yeah, and I remember this. Dyer got caught out, I think, on two of them or something in two games against mm. you, and I was like fuming. <laughs> well, Cause I remember yeah, it was that... like, you scored off a corner, I think. The yeah. second goal, yeah. Was, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually got um, a clip here from the uh, at the end of that season when they were, were, were looking. At the championship. Now there it was. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. I don't know. I don't know how that happened at all. <laughs> so, so so sorry. But what you were just saying, I had to, I had to get it in once, didn't I? What yeah. you were saying about spreading goals round, um, Craig. Um, eight goals for Madison, seven for Barnes, three for Tielemans. So our top three goal scorers have got eighteen. Like I say, Harry Kane's got something. That's right. You know, we've got Ian Acho uh, now. So um, I think now we've got that that balance across the front line. I think there's there's less... Um, uh, less is going to be looking to go through Barnes, which hopefully will take a little bit of pressure off him because he's been coming under quite a bit of pressure. And I've been quite vocal about the fact that he's been pretty poor, to be honest. But I think now we've got a bit more of a balance it means that we can look to spread the the play both ways rather than always looking for Barnes. So I'm, I'm confident. I'm not overly confident because it's Spurs and Kane is playing, but um, yeah, I mean, but I think we'll be. I think we'll be. We'll be in the game. And uh, can I just ask you, sorry, you know, oh, Pat sorry, yeah, Dakar, um, Pat mm. Dakar. Um, yeah, how's he doing at Leicester? Because I know we were linked with him before, and he's you know Freddie Canute is his agent. Mm. 
Has right, he not okay. done well or no, he's he's struggled a little bit to be honest, and I don't think we've been playing to his strengths. Mm. Ironically, <laughs> the Villa game would have been probably the best game for him because mm. Villa were playing with such a high line. I was speaking to some Villa fans uh, coming away, and they were saying that that's uh, as a new night Emery uh, tactic, but they were pushing right up to the halfway line, and and Daka would have probably got a lot of joy in that. But when it's a little bit more condensed, I think um, I think he's still trying to find his feet. Um, hopefully, it will come. You know, strikers it's difficult, isn't it? Because more than any other position, I think you rely on confidence. As soon as confidence starts ebbing away, you have an extra touch or you snatch at something. So um, it'll be interesting in the summer. I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're if we're still looking at another striker. So isn't Nacho your number one striker now? Because obviously Vardy he hasn't been. Aged, he hasn't been. It has been Dakar. It has been Vardy, and Ian Nacho hasn't uh, played. His, it was his first start, I think. Oh, you all right. Correct me, Chris. We, you know, before you guys signed him, we were linked mm. with him too. I remember back then. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, Rogers has come out and said that. Now he's got a better balance with two wingers. He thinks that will bring the best out in Ian Acho. So uh, hopefully that's the case. I mean, great, great totally with what you're saying there, um, Craig. Uh, but do you know, you know, for me, Ian Acho, he's never been given, apart from one time, and we know how that ended, he's never been given a long enough run in the no. team, has he? He's not. I think Brendan doesn't see him as a lone striker. Um mm. And, I and said when we on Saturday, look what happened. <laughs> but I think what the difference there was that he had he had two players who were up pretty much yeah. alongside him because Tete was more of an out and out winger, and I think particularly in the second half, first half, um, it did take a while to get into the game. Tete, I think it was like ten minutes in before he touched the ball at all, mm-hmm. but you could see him growing in confidence. But he was he was looking to stretch the back line a lot more than anybody we've had playing in that position because we've been filling in. So Madison's played out there. Perez has played out there. More sort of midfielders who are looking to come inside. So this was the first time that you've got a winger who was more happy to hug the touchline. So it seemed like we were playing with a proper front three. And I think that's why it, it helped Ianacho that he could drop into a gap. As you saw for the third goal where he played Tete in, that he can drop into almost a little 10 um, and then you've got runners coming off him, so it, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. And hopefully, it wasn't uh, wasn't just a one off against Villa. Do, do you think though that um, I like Dakar, but I like I like Moose mm. when we had him as well, and he wasn't really played in the right position. Do you think we got not just Dakar, but we got just whatever strike it was going to be a season too late, and we should have maybe got them a season before? when Vardy was still on reasonable form and they could have had a sort of a season to settle in? Potentially, but then, you know, you're, you're looking to buy a striker who is good enough. And usually when they're good enough, you know, they're not happy with being on the bench. You know, they're going from um, being a regular starter at a, at a decent level. Like I mean, Dakar was at Salzburg, I think, so he's playing European football. I think he would have been told that he was going to get some kind of opportunity. So it's difficult with strikers because also they need to be playing to get that confidence up. So it's really difficult to tell someone that, okay, you're going to be on the bench and, you know, you're going to get 20 minutes here and there. Um, So it was a tricky one. I think the idea was with Dakar that they brought him in a season earlier and they thought he would kickstart this season, but it's Mm. not really worked for him. No. Uh, TM, I'll, I'll, I've got to say, I don't know who this striker that you got called Katie. But, um... Kate. Yeah. Ironically, that's actually his wife's name, I think. Is it? Oh, yeah. oh, well. Put her on against us and she'll score. <laughs> yeah. You know. But Craig, Kate you know, Kane. stick with you for a second. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, I know you're not Barnes' biggest fan. Um, mm. and he takes You don't know rate Barnes? What? Go on, yeah, this, this, I, I've got to say, that's a typical reaction from someone who doesn't see him play every week. <laughs> because you, you, you know we were linked with him every week. It's not a personal it. thing. This is just people look at stats and they see that he's got a certain number of goals, he's got a certain number of assists, but he has not been good uh, right. for most of this season. Uh, and I think that comes from the fact that you know how good he can be mm. and his levels have just dropped off. And again, it's a confidence thing. 
and he gets in so many problems in positions and he makes the wrong choice, the wrong ball. He's not particularly an intelligent player. Apart from that, I love him. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's, 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 he's like, got standing. Um, but but no, do you think now, Craig, that we've got that balance that we'll be less reliant on him? Yeah, because yeah. we we have. I mean, he came back from West Brom and he probably saved us that season. Mm. And there's been a lot of pressure on him. And like I say, the first season he was being, you know told that you know he should he's never sort of taken the risk and having a shot and the next season he was taking a lot of shots and he's being called greedy. Um but it's been out. and the other player as well is you know Luke Thomas like you said you know he's a young player although he's actually older than Christiansen but where would we have been without him? Yeah I I I, I don't like it when people uh, pick on pick on him to be honest because you know he's doing the best he can i think he he can he's quite an aggressive player i think positionally sometimes uh he gets caught out but then again you know young players you, you're going to get highs and lows because they yeah. they rely on confidence you know and if confidence is shot and you, and and you've been conceding goals then then it's difficult and i think that's curtailed his opportunities to go forward because he's always worried about what's going to go on behind I think what we've got now with the players that we've actually brought in, you're seeing players being able to play in their best positions. So not only have we got a proper right winger now, that then allows Madison to play in a number 10, mm. uh, which he hasn't been able to. And he still contributed the most goals from being played out of position. But he looked a much more comfortable um, against Villa when he was in there and he was getting on the ball and creating. So... I think the whole shape looks a lot better and we've got players who are not filling gaps now. They are playing in their in their best position. So we should be optimistic, I think, for the rest of the season as long as we can keep everyone fit. And Harry, I mean, you know, you've you say you've got this new striker Kate, which I is really worrying yeah. me. But I mean, you look at our team and Vardy has liked a goal against you mm. in, uh, down the years. Um, but would you look at that team on Saturday without Vardy and go, great, brilliant? Or do you look at it now and thinking like, please play him because he's just not scoring goals? I think either way, it does make a difference. I'm more scared of players like Madison because mm. I think that guy can just do anything. But and even Harvey Barnes, I know you guys said you said something about him, but I still think he's very dangerous. Uh, mm. But especially in the game we played against you earlier in the season, Madison was basically running the first half, the first forty-five, mm. and, and you should have really scored a couple more goals. Mm. And like I said, with us most likely to play a three-four-three, I think you'll cause us problems. Mm. Well, mm. We def- I mean, and well, hopefully we do in some form or, or another. Mm. Um, I don't. I, it's not, I normally at this point say, right, you know, guys, you know, name me a player that's going to worry the opposition or what player. <laughs> I think I said about four of. times. You know that <laughs> Madison Rose and Kane for you. Um, <laughs> look, let's have a look at some score predictions, though. Um, I'm very surprised at this because I do a prediction league with um, there's there's myself, Craig, and Brad, who mm. are sort of Leicester till I die people, and we've got X Foxes, X players in there as well. And I've got to be honest with you, not one of us has actually gone for a Tottenham win this week. I mean, don't surprise me. But... <laughs> no, I mean, normally, <laughs> even sort of Ian Marshall, in fairness, ex player, he's normally quiet. He doesn't sort of hold any no. sort of, he'll, he'll say it as he sees it, you know, but even he's not gone for you to win it. But this is this is how it's um how it's panged at, p- panged, panged <laughs> out. Um which is can I just say that I do feel totally and utterly let down by Jerry Taggart. Uh, I do wish in a way that he'd gone for one, two, just to make it just very... <laughs> oh, the, the pattern. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Brad, I don't know what he was drinking at the time, but I've lost a pint of it, has gone for two. I think, again, there'll be a lot of goals, and mm. I've, I've always got to go with my team, so I've gone three, two. Um, Craig... And at this point, I would take a draw. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, has gone two two. Jerry Taggart's gone two two. Ian Marshall's gone one one. Ian Wilson's gone two one um, for uh, Leicester. Steve Linex, who usually does a bit of reverse psychology and does actually go for the away team, 
but I've got to be honest with you, I'm really, really sorry, but he can't stand Tottenham. <laughs> whoever Tottenham and Arsenal as well, in fairness, whoever they're playing, he will always go for the opposition. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> if you were playing Tranmere in the FA Cup, you he'll, know. He'll Tranmere to win. He would do, he would do. Uh, but he's gone 2-0 to Leicester. <laughs> like, look, I've got a great clip of him saying, uh, you know, just can't stand them, you know. <laughs> and Steve Walsh has gone one one. Um now I'm guessing that I mean you've said earlier that you think there's gonna be a lot of goals in the game. Um and I presumably you're going to uh, back your own team. What score are you going for? Four three Tottenham. Four three <laughs> <laughs> yeah. serious Bloody Yeah. Hell. I tell you what, I'm, I'm not going to have a time to nip off for a, uh, for a wee on this watch along. Tomorrow. You say that, but I'm, like, in this game, whenever we play against you, there's always so many goals. Yes. I, I don't yeah. think I, I, like I remember ever. Like, yeah, the, the only game I actually remember when it was like oh, just one goal, just off the top mm. of my head, was I went to the World Inter Cup final back in 99. I was only seven. But we won 1 1 1 0 one, in injury time to win the cup, I remember. Yes. Yeah, That's I was the there. I yeah. yeah. I after, think it was Alan Nielsen. Your... Alan Nielsen, yeah. yeah. Alan Nielsen. We had 10 men. Robbie player. Savage got Edinburgh sent off. I he remember. did. Yeah, because he, yeah. he was disgusting. He deserved to go. And he was a lucky <laughs> winner. <laughs> really was. Well. It's something about injury time goals. The Tottenham only like to start playing against us in the 88th minute. Yeah. Um, but last quick one before I let you go, uh, uh, Nate. Um, and then we're going to do uh, just more on Leicester with, with Craig. But mm-hmm. um, you haven't got. Loris in goal, and a lot of Leicester fans. I'll ask you the same thing in a second, Craig. You know, a lot of Leicester fans are looking at this again. Great, you know, but like you say, he's got mistakes in him this season. Um, the fact that he's not playing, how do you feel about that? Are you sort of concerned, or are you, you know, even relieved? <laughs> it's kind of a bit of both. Um, because, <laughs> in the sense that, um like I don't, I think Loris, what he represents as a club captain in itself is like important. But if we look at him on his performances, you'd say, oh, it's not a big miss because I mean, he's not been playing well this season at all. Yeah. And pe- like I said, we've been calling to play Forza for the past like two months. So this is why I said to you when I first came on, I don't know why I understand why Spurs fans are moaning now that we didn't sign a goalkeeper when you've been saying to drop Larice anyway. So it's just, yeah. I was one of them. So why, why would I go on Twitter and start tweeting something like that? When I've been saying today, but I'm, I'm sad Larice is injured regardless. Obviously he's, he's important. Yeah, to of us. course. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think it will be that much of a big issue. More of the issue for me is maybe like Basuma, because like I said, in the home match, mm. when we played you guys, he was really significant in terms of the midfield three. I mean, he could play Saar, but I just don't see him playing Saar or Skip as an extra midfielder. He's very stubborn, so he'll play 3 4 3 with Son, <laughs> Kane, Kulusevski, Bentacle, Hoiberg. I think Poro might get a start because hmm. we've got Champions League in midweek, and I don't think he can play that game. And then probably Sessignon, even, which if Sessignon plays, I'll be very unhappy if Sessignon plays. <laughs> and then the That's back three is just Romero and whoever else. Yeah, Craig, should we be happy that Loris, like I say, isn't in goal? Well, I was going to say, he has, he has got a, a rick in him and it was noticeable against um, Villa that we were trying to press very high and put hmm. put uh, Villa's back line and the keeper under pressure to stop them playing out from the back. And I don't think Loris is great with his feet, to be honest, but then I'm not sure Forster is either. So um, I would look to see us trying to press quite high when you've got goal kicks and the like and uh, that's see a good idea turn that's it over because yeah. yeah. our biggest three, is playing two, out the back yeah and mm. it's when we try uh, this is why me and my dad when we go to games we scream at them to push up and just kick it long mm. because yeah i know if we start kicking it around the back the other team will just press us and then we'll want mm. them to do a mistake and then yeah just, that's usually yeah. us though isn't it craig it, it is but it was noticeable that that seemed to be a, a tactic now that we've got you know, two wingers. Um, you, yeah, we didn't play it out from the back as much, well. did we? And obviously Villa did, and it played into our hands. It, it, exactly. I mean, it was stupid what Villa tried to do, but they didn't really learn from it, and they continued to do it. And uh, so I, I think we will try and, and press quite high. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so TM went 3-2 to Spurs, which, again, you know, I, I would expect it to. Um, mm. Ricardo is set to return as well. Craig, my God, is yeah. it, like all oh, Christmas is coming at once, isn't it? 
Yeah, I know. It'll be, it'll be nice to see him back. I, I would think that um, he won't be rushed back. Um, but, it, I mean, he deserves a decent run because he's been very unlucky with injuries. And, and when he's at his best, then he's a fantastic um, yeah. uh, a, a sort right. of outlet for us as well. Yeah, oh, yes, indeed. Um, Harry, thank you so much for coming no, on. No, it's okay, don't um, worry. Yeah. I am sorry to have shown the, the, the horse picture again. <laughs> oh, no, it, it, no, you don't. <laughs> it will just go on and on. I, and on I expected as soon as I came on, he was to say something about the, the title and the FA Cup. <laughs> of course, <laughs> but it always will be. Yeah. And it's just like if when, when we get Southampton fans on, we've always got to mention the 9 0. You know, it's just, it's there, it's out there. I'm not a lot you can do about it. At least you guys, at least you guys actually won the Premier League and won yeah, the FA Cup. Exactly. We are, I haven't seen that in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Have you got a lot of chance to do it? <laughs> well, the FA Cup maybe this year. I don't know. But yeah. there's not a one in the year. You only win it when there's a one in the year. Mm. Yeah, we used to say that, but it's been how many years? <laughs> Since 91, that, I think people used to say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, 61. I remember. Um, <laughs> I don't remember to be honest with you, but I remember the score. Like, just give a shout out again, just quickly, as to where people can find you. Yeah, so please subscribe to my channel. Is has Spur TV, so H A Z S P U R TV. And if you will follow me on Twitter, is at has Spur nice too. So it's very similar. Just follow me and go and subscribe to the channel. It's very the and same, basically. The, the link is in the description below on YouTube. So I'll um, see you tomorrow as well. As well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I will see you doing, doing, doing exactly the same thing tomorrow and yeah. uh, <laughs> do it all over again. Yeah. And I'd wish, you, I'd wish you luck for the weekend, but you know I wouldn't mean it. Yeah, same with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mate. Take care. And Take I'll care, see you man. tomorrow. Cheers, Harry. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye now. Thanks a lot to Harry. I'm back on his channel tomorrow at 7. So um, just just sort of record myself, shouldn't I? Just <laughs> yeah, exactly. Play, you know. But, yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to Ricardo coming back because I even mm. think he could play, um, you know, if Tete is not on form or injured. He could even play that mm. bit further up, couldn't he? But talking of Ricardo, um, Castagna's worried me. He's not... Yeah. Seem to be the player that he used to be these, you know, this season. No, I think he's had some good games, but he was a bit of a weak link. I would have said um, Villa. I think I mentioned in in uh, when I when I came on um, last Saturday that mm. he, we Villa got in behind him a little bit too often for my liking. They were playing one twos around him. Now, whether some of that is because on his right hand side he had. Uh, Suter, who you know, it was his first game. The communication may not have been what it was before with him and uh, and Amati, but there was definitely getting in behind him. Um, so yeah, yeah, he's not he's not looked as strong as he has done in the past, to be honest. No, and can you believe? I know. He, he, I mean, he's, the guy's gone to Saudi Arabia Ronaldo, and Sky Sports are still giving him highlights because he happened to get a hat trick. I mean, if he can't get a hat yeah. trick in every single game for the rest of their season, yeah. there is something wrong. But God's sake, Sky, stop licking his ass now. For God's yeah. sake, he's moved on. Um, and the back pairing of Sutar and Vase. Yeah. I thought Vase or Vase, however you want to pronounce it, yeah. had came back. Probably had his best game since the you know the two own goals. Yeah, he looked pretty strong to be honest. He uh, he got away with a couple of tackles that uh, he was probably only an inch inch or two away from clearing out people rather than the ball but uh yeah. but very aggressive um and i think those two will be a good pairing to be honest um suta 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 reads uh, you know, obviously we've only seen him for one game and i didn't really see him when he was at stoke so i can't uh, no. really talk too much about that but he looked like someone who could read the game pretty well uh mm. and and hopefully if his debut is anything to go by then uh, then he'll go from strength to strength it was a good debut, and like mm. I say, own goals, they're always unlucky because then you say you never mm. mean to score an own goal. But, I mean, FaZe came, seemed to come over quite quickly, and like I said earlier, in a way, it was it was probably good that he'd got those two own goals because that could have really destroyed a player. First game in the top flight, first game for your new team, first yep. goal against your own goalie. Mm. Yeah, but you know, he just put it behind him. It, it it was one of those things. It wasn't really like he made a a, a horrific 
no. error or something or knocked it past his own keeper. It literally was one of those where you, your just natural instinct is to react to a ball coming across the box. So it was just unfortunate. I've just put James Ward prowse into our into our defence. Okay, then goal um, as well. Uh, he might, at least he'd be able to take uh, goal kicks, won't he? Yeah, um, true. So we'll have a quick look. I mean, I know what I would do, um, but what formation do you want to, to go for? Well, I, I think it'll be similar to that, but the central midfielder will be more in a 10 role, more advanced rather than defensive, to be honest. Oh, that's taking yeah. the other way, isn't it? Yeah, the other way. There we go. That's, yeah, that's probably as close as we'll get, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the team, I th for me, the team picks itself. But, you know, at left back, I would, um, I've got to go for Christensen. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, he, as, as excited as you can get about a left back, um, yeah. This is probably it. He, he, he looks. He looks like he'll be a fan's favourite pretty quickly. To be honest, I do. I think I agree with you there, and I think it won't do Thomas any harm to have that break, will it? No, and it was interesting that he brought Thomas on. Um, uh, he brought him on for Christensen. I think we were all surprised yeah. that he made that change, but it was a couple of minutes later he made another change, and he clearly went to a back five. So he felt more comfortable with with Thomas as part of a five than a four. So I yeah. think he'll still get some he'll still get some pitch time. Oh, I think he will. Uh, and I'm struggling to find Christian. I found him the other week. To, I found him last week. To be honest yeah. with you, uh, let me have one last go at trying to spell his name. K R I S T I I A N. And uh, to be honest with you, I quite. I am, there we go. He's, un, he's under Copenhagen, that's why, but you can't right. tell. Uh, but to me, he, he was, I think it was nice because he was sort of saying like, you know, you're still in my thoughts. You're still mm. part of the squad. Um, I think I say the break will do Thomas good. But mm -hmm. yeah, I do think that it, it just, um, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I know what I want to say and I can't get the words out. But yes, I think... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I think he was dropped. And who else have we got again? Should Christensen mm. get injured? And obviously, the question is always going to be how long till the new signings mm. are. Um, you know, it, it's uh, we, you know, we, we've got again got to have to rely on him, haven't we? It, it, it is. I mean, we, and we've seen you know, it's very often that you you say that new signings will take a little bit of time to bed in, but uh, it was very encouraging against Villa that they all seemed pretty comfortable from the off. Yeah, yeah, it was like I mean they'd had almost like a full week, hadn't they? Yeah. Um, I, I presume we are going for a face suitor. Yeah. To central uh, central defenders, it yeah. looked good. And again, I mean suitor is a big bugger, but unlike mm. our other big bugger, he's he's able to jump. Well, indeed, and uh, you know I think very similarities with uh, with Harry Maguire. I think it was. You know, mm. not as tall, but had come from, you know, a, a lower team, a championship team wearing red and white stripes. Um, well, yes. but, but has the same sort of attributes, I think. Looks to play on the front foot, um, aggressive. Uh, and if he can be as successful as Maguire was for us, then, uh, mm. then you know, I'll take that all day long, to be honest. Yes, I agree 100%. Just to go back to Christensen, I think you mm. mentioned about him doing corners. Um, yes, it was nice to see somebody taking corners that got it past the first man. Yeah, it was. It looked a decent delivery, to be honest, uh, yeah. and give us that opportunity to 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 have in swingers from both sides. Mm. Um, yes, yeah. No, it, it, it was all round think, really good. Do you think now, though, that really there's no excuse for Rogers? Is there? He is with us till the end of the season. I don't see any point, even if we don't have you know a good end of you know you know last last half of the season we can't get rid of him now there's no point you know no he's got his own he's got his own players in you know exactly. we, we've done well in the window it would have been nice i think to have jack harrison yes um definitely. because you know he, he can play on both sides so it would have put uh would have put pressure on tete and barnes uh and and enabled rogers to to switch either of them yeah 
in the last 20 minutes of a game. Um, and I think it would have been good for Barnes to have a bit more pressure on him, to be honest. Yeah, no, I um, agree. So it's a shame that didn't happen, but we filled the gaps that we needed to fill. So um, so um, this is looking yeah. more like Roger's team. Yes, and therefore, as I say, like you say, no yeah. excuses, you know. Yeah. But the, the good, I mean, like you say, good thing is that we filled the positions, but not with, maybe not with his players, because we know what happens when he picks the players. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? I guess we're having Castagna, despite all the yeah. problems, we're going to have him on the right, uh, aren't we? You know. Yeah, I think Pereira will be sort of eased back in, to be honest. Yes, yeah. Um, going across the middle, uh, left middle. This is where I, I would make the change. I, I would only make one change, to be honest. I know I'm giving away where I'm going with the rest of the team, but I would... <laughs> I would play Mendy over KDH. I don't think really KDH. Yeah. I don't think KDH had a particularly good game uh, against Villa. He did win the ball back for uh, for the first goal, but his touch was off quite a bit. And I think with Mendy, the position he plays, it, it, it would allow him to pick Kane up when we know Kane loves dropping deep into mm. that ten roll. I think you've got a Mendy there who could either, you know, take him out or could stop the ball getting to Kane. So for me, I think Mendy would be a better, uh, a better um, option than KDH for this particular game. I, I had him because obviously you, you you were here last week, and I put him yeah. in my team and was yeah. surprised when there wasn't a central defensive midfield. Would you put yeah. him in the middle or or on the left there? I, I think the the way he set up was was that it was KDH and Tielemans were both almost more central. Um, uh, cheers, Tony. Um, we're, we're, we're more central. Um, Tielemans yeah. was playing a much more defensive role than he has done, and allowing Madison to just have the free reign of that that sort of ten spot. So, yeah. um, so for me, I think. I, th I think they would both sit deep and try and block that space where where Kane loves to drop in deep, uh, and well, stop the stop the counter attacks against us, and that allows Madison to to have free reign in the ten in in front of him. So Tielemans on the right, is, yeah. I, I think is what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then James Madison. Yeah. Um. In that in that central role. Yeah. Uh, but to me, and I know. He's had to play on the right um, because we didn't have any player there mm. that could play that role or any player that Brendan trusted to, to stay in that that mm. position for a long time to give them confidence to play there. Uh, but Madison, in that middle, and he's got the freedom to roam, and like you yeah. say, with Mendy coming that that's his best role, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think it, it gives him a solid platform there with having those two behind him. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. Now, um, are we? Because I know what you were saying about Barnes before, but are you are you going with Barnes? Yes, yeah. I mean, there's no real alternative to be honest at the moment, unless you push someone like KDH further forward. But I think that front three worked pretty well, to be honest. And uh, as I say, I can't see Spurs pushing up a lot and leaving a lot of space in behind. So I think it's more a, a game for uh, for Kelechi. Yeah. Um... Let me just put Kelechi in. Uh, I mean, to me, I thought Barnes looked better because there was less pressure on him because yeah. we suddenly were able to play it down both wings. Yeah, I think I, you know, I would like a little bit more work rate, work rate from him coming backwards. He doesn't. It, it all seems a little bit half-hearted. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're right. I think um, I, I think there's there'll, there'll be less pressure on him. I think the midfielders can look both ways now, rather than always looking to to try and play Barnes in. And, and if Barnes, as we know, he, he doesn't always make the most intelligent runs, so it meant we had to recycle the ball a little bit too often. If if Barnes wasn't in a position to receive it, the fact mm. now we've got two wingers, I think it gives us more options going forward. Yeah, no, no, no. I think that. Um... A good team. Um, it'd be interesting to see if he does make a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
<laughs> we've seen this in the past, haven't we? You know, where I mean, I said earlier, you know, championship season when we ran away with it and broke all the records in the club's history, for it seemed like, uh, you could pick um Nigel Pearson's team six weeks in advance, mm -hmm. couldn't you? And then yeah. suddenly we get up to the Premier League and you change it, is it every single week? Um, and you've got to, when you've got the winning formula like that, surely you've got to say, oh, am I being naive here? But you've got to say, look, Spurs, this is a team that put four past Villa. Like, mm. and, and Villa, let's be honest with you, yes, right, you could say they had a bad game, but so nobody's falls under Emery. No. Um, and Emery, Emery. But, um, you know, you know, <laughs> this is what we're going to play against you as well. Not make a load of changes. Say, oh God, it's Spurs. Oh, got to have a bit, a bit worried about them. Let's do. Let's put this guy mm. back and that. But that, maybe that's just me. But that's what I, you know, how I feel. Yeah, you no, know, I don't think. I think everyone who, who started the game, um, apart from KDH, uh, you know, deserves to, to to do it again. That it's a solid team for me, and everybody knows their roles. It's not like you've got. Um, the classic uh, square pegs in round holes. So for me, no, that's that's no. a pretty solid team. Should we feel confident? I think probably more so than we have done for a while going into a game against Spurs. Yeah. And for the rest of the season? Yeah, I, I think, you know, if, if that team can stay fit, mm. I saw enough there to, to allow us to play more on the front foot. Uh, and I think we're a better team when we're playing on the front foot. So um, rather we than... Actually... Uh, I think I said, I don't know whether it was you I said it to, I don't think it was, but I actually was trying to find um, the the, the uh, press conference from last week mm -hmm. and there was problems apparently with the recording. It wasn't up and I clicked on one and it was uh, his first ever interview, Brendan, when, mm -hmm. he, when we appointed him. And he was going on about playing, I'm looking forward, I'm going to bring exciting football and like you said, we're going to play on the front foot. And I'm like, what the hell has happened? But... That now, I think the problem this season for me is we're too far back for um, uh, to, 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 to probably push for Europe. I mean, never say never, obviously, but mm. I think, but I don't, I think there's worse teams than us that will go down this season. I think so. I, I, I think you know. I think you've got Everton are going to get a bounce under Sean Dyche and they'll probably be harder to beat. I don't think they've got a lot of goals in them, to be honest. So, you know, I think it depends on how tight he keeps them. Again, Southampton, same thing. I think you usually look at teams that struggle and they, they can be tight at the back, but if they haven't got goals in them, then they're going to struggle. And we've got goals in us and, and that's what gives me confidence, I think. Yes, yeah. Craig, thank you so much, as always. Um, my wise old owl, it has been a pleasure. And I know you're with us next week, but then you're not with us for a couple of weeks. Is that no, I'm, 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 no it's the next two, next the two next that two, are, sorry, I think I'll miss. Yeah, that is fine. That, that is not a problem. Yeah. Uh, do have lots and lots of fun at the, at the comic festival. Um, Cheers, mate. I'm sure it'll be a laugh. Hey, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you are. If you fancy tomorrow, we're doing the uh, the question time, the debate show, mm -hmm. and we are going to talk in FFP, believe it or not. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Well, no, to me, just quickly, I know I'm not going to get into a long conversation. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it tomorrow. But what annoys me is that Leicester, we, our summer transfer window was ruined because of FFP. Mm -hmm. In the fact that we were trying to play it, and we've done it in the past. We've been fined, weren't we, in the, in the yeah, championship? Yeah. But we were trying to play, you know, do it right and, and get, and we didn't spend <coughs> or get players in. And yet mm. Manchester City come apparently for nine seasons or whatever it is, nine years, and just bulldoze it. And it's like, well, hang on, because that's mm. probably ruined our whole season because we're so far behind now. Potentially, I think when you've got as much money as Man City have and, and you know, and Chelsea and uh, these ones, you know, they can afford the best lawyers as well. So yeah. um, it'll apparently be interesting to see lawyer. if anything sticks. Their lawyer is on eighty thousand pounds a day. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. He was he was the lawyer that uh, was it a week? I'm not. It's a lot of money anyway. Well, I tell you um, what, he'll, he'll be trying to drag that case out for a long time then. <laughs> won't he? he? But he's that he was um, Boris Johnson's party gate lawyer. So maybe no, actually right. he's not that good as everybody no. says. But if you fancy joining us anytime after nine o'clock. 
Uh, your input would be more than welcome. But obviously, I know you. At, it's Friday night yeah. and you're at the comedy festival. So if you can't, I totally understand it as well. Enjoy the game. Cheers, mate. I hope and so. And uh, as I say, I hope it. last week was a, a start of uh, a good second half of the season to come. I'm, I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. But uh, this is Leicester. Yes, indeed. We never know. <laughs> okay, Craig. All the best, mate. Have a good weekend. All the best to your family. Cheers, uh, Chris. Bye, everyone. Festival. And enjoy enjoy Cheers. the match as well. Take care. See you, mate. Bye. All. Bye. 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 -bye. Thanks to Craig there. Um, he does. We only watch it on the telly. He actually suffers at the match. Um, so bless him. Uh, but hey, you never know. Next, uh, I mean, let's be positive. Um, we, 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 if we can play like we played against Villa, and you could argue whether Villa were, you know, uh, 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 you know, full speed or whatever. But oh, I just fancy us. I really, really do. Uh, quick one of these. Coming up next on Leicester Till I Die TV. Like I said, we have got uh, question time, nine o'clock tomorrow. Harry can't make it, so it's me and Brad and possibly Craig or everyone else who wants to come on. Let me know. We are going to be discussing um, the... Um, yeah, take that. All the best, Craig. Thanks very much. Um yeah, we will be uh, discussing that 9 o'clock tomorrow. Then we've got the normal watch-along on Saturday at 8.30. Uh, no, we haven't, at 2.30, and followed at 6.30 by the post-match. And if you want to still catch up on the uh, the interview shows that we do, uh, it's called The Conversation, go to Less Little I Die uh, TV on YouTube and just type it in the, in the YouTube search bar to bring it up, Less Little I Die TV. And I've got um, Russell Osman. He gave us some great stories last night. And we've got, still up there, we've got um, Pontus Kamar. Brilliant. And he's still got Janino in his back pocket. And two weeks off this. Yes. Who could it be? Two weeks, so two weeks on Wednesday, we have got a very special surprise guest coming on. I'm looking forward to it. It's probably the biggest name that I've had on the channel, going to be honest with you. I can't tell you who it is. Well, I can, but guess what? I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> Nate says, take care. Thank you, Nate, and you as well. Have a good day over there in America. Um, Chris, did your shirt come out of the Leicester shop? It's great. I want one. It is. Yep, yeah, like I say, Terry. Um, the blue one that I had, I wanted it, the white version as well, so I'd ask for it for Christmas. And this is what came when my daughter ordered it. And I'd given her the actual code, so it, I, maybe I saw it wrong. Not my eyes are like. Um, and it came as this, and I thought, I like this. So, yes, it is from the Leicester shop. Um, look look under, under, under the T-shirt. Don't look at the description because you might not find it, but just look at the pictures. Because, like I say, I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting just my blue T-shirt, but in white. Um, but yeah, I love it. I think it really, really, really does look smart. I think uh, I, I think I carry it well, don't you? Mm, yes, I think so. Anyway, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everybody in the chat. Thank you to Harry, and don't forget I'm at Harry's on Harry's channel. Um, hey, it's Hey Spurs TV. Uh, it's descriptions in the link below. I'm on that at seven o'clock tomorrow. Talking the match again. Uh, but thank you to everybody uh, in the chat, Craig as well, for watching. And if you've been listening on your favorite podcast platform, be that Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Google, or whatever your podcast platform is, we're part of the Talk Sport Fans Network now. Thank you for lending me your ears. You can have them back now. I'm going to go have a rub down with the wet copy of the Daily Mail, and I will see you tomorrow at nine o'clock. Remember, take care, stay safe. And don't do anything that I wouldn't enjoy. Leaves it open. Good night. This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. Thanks for watching Lester Till I Die. This is Chris saying goodbye and see you next time.
for watching. These videos are tremendous. You'd better like them too or I'll be back. Lester Till I Die TV.